Did you know that 80% of people are wasting money on subscriptions that they completely forgot about? This is where the Rocket Money app, formerly known as Truebill, comes in to save the day. Rocket Money shows you all of your subscriptions in one place and then cancels whatever you don't want. Get rid of useless subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash holly. Seriously, this could save you hundreds of dollars. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions at rocketmoney.com slash holly. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today has been in the industry for several years. I've shot her many times for my own site, for Twisties, for some other people that I can't recall right now. Uh, she was a Twisties treat of the month last summer. That was a fun shoot. We should talk about that. <laughs> um, she is so gorgeous, smart, and sweet. Definitely one of my favorite people to work with. The one and only incomparable Jenna Fox. Hi. <laughs> Do I look into any of this? No, you, that's your camera right oh, okay. there. Girl, you should know this. Zero bottle. Hey. <laughs> so how are you? Life. Yeah. <laughs> you are busy. It's kicking my butt. Yeah. But you're like a very, you've always been a very like ambitious driven person. You're very, you're also very dependable. Like, I mean, I've obviously booked you many times, you know, on the first round, but you've also filled in for last minute cancellations for me a few times, which I've been super grateful yeah. for. Because I love you. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> Do you remember the first time we shot together? No. It's okay. I what scene was, you. well. It was from, I believe it was for a movie. It was for Digital Playground. <gasps> oh yeah, the cheerleader thing. <laughs> yes. And I still remember that amazing scene when I forget what it was. It was one of those stupid caught scenes that we always have to shoot. And you like hid I behind hid like curtain. half of a curtain. <laughs> the worst hiding place, but you just like picked it right. And it was just so comical and it was perfect for the movie, which was, you know, stupid, like all porn comedies are. Um, it was great. I, I don't, I remember, but I was like, yeah, that curtain's long enough. Like, yeah. yeah, it was just like, just like, it reminds me of my daughter because she likes to also try to like hide from me, you know what I mean? And just like, it was just like, <sighs> it, it only came to your waist and then like your legs were right there. It's like, Jenna, Cassidy everyone was, could see you. <laughs> Cassidy was great too. She was like, not right there. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> she was great. I forget what that was. It was about like two rival cheerleader f or fraternity or sorority. sororities, I think. Yeah. It was called, I think it was called Sorority Girls. Yeah. Something like we that. We were like pledging. Yeah. Oh, those Good days times. are all those days are a fucking blur, man. When I used to shoot features, especially for digital, those were rough. They don't do those anymore. I think that was like my first feature. Do you not have you not how many features have you done? You've done a few. I think maybe four. Total? Mm -hmm. Really? Interesting. I've done a lot of the ad scenes, but yeah. I'm assuming that's what they consider features now. Ad scenes. Joy. <laughs> So for those of, because sometimes we fall into industry talk and I want to like explain oh, yeah. things to the audience because sometimes they're like, what the fuck's a feature and what's an ad scene? Okay, so a feature is a movie. Um, it's usually like, uh, it takes several days to shoot. Um, it's about four to five scenes. And it's, you know, like a, a, a long narrative story with several sex scenes interwoven into it. So that's considered a feature. An ad scene is a one day shoot, it's a scene, but what is really important is these very impactful moments. It's basically like those speeded up gifts that you see on Pornhub. Um, that's essentially like what constitutes an ad scene. So it's a scene, like a kind of regular scene, you know, there's some situation going mm -hmm. on, but there's very specific moments and pretty much over the top ridiculous shots that we are required to get. So, um, you know, close up of a big butt, maybe a stepmom getting stuck under the sink. Um, in my case, <laughs> I shot an ad scene yesterday um, where it was a Christmas threesome and there was like the dumb boyfriend who like didn't notice that like his girlfriend was having sex with his sister and somebody else like while he was getting eggnog. I mean, I don't know why it took him 20 minutes to get eggnog, but um, 
Yeah. Dang. It was basically that's 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 an ad scene. So for us producers, we actually generally don't love shooting ad scenes because they take a very long time. They're super complicated. There's all these specific shots that we have to get. Everything has to fit within a square, even though we shoot in a 16 by nine format because um, those little GIF ads that you see yeah, are like square format. Small. So it's, it's just complicated and logistically tricky. Uh, so that's the difference between an ad scene and a feature for those of you who want to know <laughs> more about Porn logistics. Speaking of Christmas, we shot a Christmas scene together. Which Christmas? We shot so many scenes together. It was for many vids. I think it was when they were doing oh, their magazine. Yes, you and Jelena Jensen. That was yeah. so cute. And her green hair. Yeah, that was really fun. I don't know where those photos are. I don't know where they are either. They were for like <laughs> many vids magazine. I think I um, have one. And then I don't. I mean, I still have all the raws at home. <clears throat> I keep the raws of everything. I never, I never toss content. You so. send those over to me. Well, I mean, I could send them to you, but then like you can't say where you got them from because I don't know what the usage rights are. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I mean, they're on the internet. Uh-huh. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's get back to you. Um, so you have been doing a ton. Like I see you doing all this fashion catwalk stuff lately. So tell me, tell me about that. What is going on in your world? Uh, I just did Paris, Milan, and New York Fashion Week. How was that? It was it was a lot. I I didn't think it would be what it was, but it was a lot. It was a lot of drama, a lot of entitlement, a lot of celebrities wasted out of their mind. That was fun to watch. But I walked for a couple of people, but it also the fashions were not fashioning for me. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm used to like the 1993, like those type of catwalks they would do, like the 90s supermodel. Mm-hmm. And this time it was like, she's got sweatpants on. Mm-hmm. What, what are we doing? A leisure? Okay. Uh, yeah, fashion is weird. <laughs> I mean, I, I I remember just the other day I was looking at the Balenci- Balenciaga, Balenciaga. Um, fashion walk mm-hmm. in a mud pit okay, like <laughs> <laughs> it was like a little video game they were just like and yeah and I guess it was and I'm sure it was like some kind of commentary on like I don't know dirt and uh mud and, and society and dirtiness I don't I like know. Balenciaga but they're I feel like they're a social experiment they yeah. put you through the weirdest things to see like how how much you can take it or like who will buy our stuff. There's stuff it's interesting. awful. It's awful. I looked at, I looked up some of the stuff online. There was one like shirt that was like jean shorts that they like cut armholes <laughs> through. It was literally this girl was wearing jean shorts. And I was like, that's so stupid. Who the fuck would ever wear those? You would not wear that. I, I would. You would not some wear that. Some of their stuff is pretty, like some of the stuff is cool. It was not cool. But some of the stuff I'm like, it was not the cool. chip bag is like questionable what's the chip bag they sell a lays chip bag but it's like a handbag on their website and i think it's like 1500 two thousand dollars yeah that's and i was like i can go to the 99 cents store yeah. finish a bag of hot cheetos and make a bag yeah they- but then it wouldn't be balenciaga <laughs> well i could put balenciaga on it with the like black sharpie and it would and then they would be like <laughs> that is brilliant yeah, let's just add that to the fashion. line and then you become <laughs> huge fashion designer because you took a fucking <laughs> cheetah's chip bag and you- that's why i'm like i feel like their stuff is like a social experiment yeah see, like, who's really buying our stuff i mean to be fair if it's about marketing which i'm sure it is it I works so. right because people talk about it like yeah. i've seen really hilarious tiktoks like imitating <laughs> their 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 fashion, the fashion show. so i think it's just trying to cut through the noise because there's so many fashion walks and it's always like you I know like, poof, like funny. how do you look different from everybody else yeah I like them. They're funny. Yeah. I mean, it is all about marketing these days, I feel like. Yeah. Which you're very good at, by the way. Oh, my God. It's so hard, though. Yeah? Like, because social media is changing. It feels like every single day. Instagram is so different now. Twitter is so different now. TikTok is so different now. So Mm -hmm. it's like, "Mm." and then being a woman of color, Mm -hmm. it it also sucks. (laughs) Yeah. How so? They they treat us obviously almost in every industry. They treat us differently. Like mm-hmm. 
a white creator on TikTok can go viral for the black person's dance and like they created it they go viral for it and they get like the revenue for Mm. it same on instagram like we as like sex workers too we get reprimanded for posting a t-shirt pic Mm -hmm. but i like playboy but playboy can post nudes on instagram like full on nudes full nudes dude yeah, there was, and that was right after Pornhub's account got deleted too. We started seeing that, and I'm in yeah, sweatpants, and I'm getting like, yeah, it's got to be frustrating. So frustrating. Have you had your account deleted? Twice, oh but God. I've gotten it back because I, why was I deleted? I don't even post anything remotely sexual anymore yeah. on Instagram because I don't want my account to get deleted. Right, but. The algorithm sucks. No one's really on it as much as they used to be. They're on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And TikTok, you can't post photos. Mm -hmm. But you also, if I get on a bikini and I'm like in the pool, sexual activity. Mm -hmm. But if a skinny white girl is in like a G-string, viral. We love you. Yeah, it's pretty pretty frustrating. I had... um, a video just pulled from TikTok and I appealed it and then they reviewed it, I guess, and decided it was, yeah, against their community standards. It was literally Venus guy, fully dressed, not in lingerie, <clears throat> not in a bikini. She was in like a romper. It was very like modest. And she was talking about her ideal first date. And it was very like, I would like to go to the movies and have dinner. That would be really nice. And then walk on the beach, nothing sexual. And they were like, nope. I was like, okay. And I get the abuse one a lot. I'm like, who am I abusing? Really? <laughs> I really want to know. Yeah, they're like sexual abuse or like abusive for the community. I'm like, do I'm, you get sexual exploitation? I've had a couple of those too. Where they say not I'm like anymore. exploiting somebody sexually. I get that on Instagram. Mm. And I was like, hmm, I'm posting a TikTok of me eating pizza. Yeah. Who am I abusing? Have you heard that TikTok's <laughs> going to um, start like an adults only section? It doesn't mean you can put on adult. Like yeah, just content, for us. But it'll be like subject matters, you know, like this podcast pretty much. Hmm. So, I wonder how long that's going to last. Well, the problem is, is that they have that for YouTube as well. They have like an 18 and over age oh, restricted. Yeah. But then like your traffic is cut it's shit. by like two thirds and you can't monetize it. So it's like you don't want to do that, like because you get no exposure. Yeah, it's like the button they say, is this for kids or not? That one. No, that's different. So there's a whole other um, like and I don't know that because I obviously don't produce content for children, but if you produce content for children, then I think there's some other rules that you have to follow or something Mm -hmm. like that. There was like a weird thing that they went through where they wouldn't let you monetize content for kids before. I can't remember what the deal was. They've obviously changed that, Hmm. but I don't know. These, these rules are strange. I think it's like, it's one of those complicated things about running a user upload site because so many people are irresponsible with the stuff that they I've upload. I've seen porn on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now Twitch is technically a porn site. How so? I don't ever go on Twitch. <sighs> it used to be that it was just strictly gaming yeah. and people were like coming to you to play video games with you or watch you play Minecraft or something. Right. Now there's girls in freaking bikinis and swimming pools. Like in little kitty pools in their apartment in a bikini. And they're like, hey – yeah, I'm going to step on your foot. Huh? huh. I mean, yeah, what? I think it's like the problem is too is that, you know, with so many independent creators out there, everybody, you've got to find a way to monetize yourself and and bring like exposure to your, to your brand, right? So social media avenues are the only way to go, yeah. which is also why, you know, when some people might react to you being bummed about your Instagram being deleted, but like, oh, like who cares? You won't get as many likes. Like it's like an ego I'm thing. Like, no, that's how I make money. Exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like that's the only avenues that we have to market ourselves. And we're constantly being shut down, even if we're not showing sexual content, even if we're not linking to sexual like um websites. I don't even have a link in my Instagram anymore. I'm like, mm, not putting OnlyFans in there. No, no you can't. No way. You but can't. some people do. Like, they have their link, and then OnlyFans is, like, in the link thread. And I'm like, how do you get away with that? I do. I have that. You do? Yeah. Oh, I'm so scared. They haven't bought, they haven't listened to me yet. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so, but also because of modeling, so I, I like to Yeah. Out. 
So let's get back to modeling. Let's <laughs> talk about that because I feel like we went off topic. So how did you like transition into this fashion modeling? I haven't completely transitioned. I want to, mm -hmm. but I still do sex work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, what did, what was I doing? I, I've always wanted to be a mainstream model mm -hmm. and actress, but porn came first. Mm -hmm. And it's how I pay the bills. It's how I make money. Also, it was fun. But I started, I think I started to like look for castings and stuff. And then I did some here and then I did like a fashion show here. And I was like, okay, I could do this. Mm -hmm. And then I went to New York and I was like, I'm going to finally do the big four. I'm going to do the big three. So it's Milan, New York, Paris, and London. Mm -hmm. I didn't do London because mm -hmm. it was like so close. And I was like, okay, I didn't, I didn't have time to prepare for that. So I did New York and I was like, okay, this is cool. But like the fashions weren't fashioning. So I was like, okay. Maybe next year will be better. So did you go to castings in New York? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you went to castings in New York to walk for New York Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. And then you I assume you landed some jobs. Yes. That's I landed cool. a bunch. And I landed some that I couldn't do because they were right on top of each other. And I was right. like, oh, this is fun. And But I was uh, like, okay, no, I can't do all of these. Even though I tried. But trying to get somewhere in New York and it's like you have a 30-minute window not possible. I mean, yeah. it's possible, but for me, it was like, no, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing it. And then I went to Milan and I walked for a fashion house studio and I was like, this is so cool. And then my height was an issue because I'm not like 5'10". Yeah. But they knew that. They booked me before and they knew that I was 5'7". So I was like. But then they still gave you shit when you got there? The house didn't but some of the designers within there's like 15 designers within the house oh, and then they casted us before but then when we got there they wanted to like look at us in person and i had on platforms so i looked taller but they're like put clothes on me and they're like no yeah. no and i was like shit i know it's my height but one designer i didn't appreciate it they knew my height they saw me standing there they put clothes on me and one of the designers, there was like two of them within that one house. They, the woman was like, mm, I don't like it because I can't see more torso because I was wearing a bodysuit, but I had mm. jeans on. Mm -hmm. And so she took my outfit off of me, put it on a, a taller model, and then put a jacket on the model. And I was like, why don't you just put a jacket on me if that's what you were going to do? Mm -hmm. and she put it on the white girl. And I was like. Mm. okay how did you what how was the like what was the vibe and how were you treated there like how was it different than the way you're treated like on adult industry sets I was treated honestly pretty pretty nicely besides that one incident which mm -hmm. it's fashion I get it if it, mm -hmm. you don't like it on me you might like it on her it's fine but I think that was the only thing besides that like I didn't have any hair problems I know that's a big thing in the fashion industry mm -hmm. But my hair was short. So I was like, mm, they You were wearing it the way you have it now, right? Mm -hmm. Like short. It was short a little longer like... and curlier. Okay. I just permed it the other night. This hurt the fall out. Oh, no. Is that why we're wearing, we're wearing a hat today? <laughs> it's in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Mom, I'm balding. But <laughs> I did see, like, I loved some of the shots that you posted, like, with the bleached hair. It looked really good on you. <sighs> Someone told me I look like Carl Lagerfeld. When it was like what? blown out and I was like, oh, fuck you. Funny, but fuck you. <laughs> but I was like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. <sighs> and after I did, I did Paris too. And I know a lot of models are like Paris. They're really like towards brown women. But I've heard the opposite, that they love brown and dark skinned women. But no, nope, everyone treated me nicely. There wasn't enough food. I will say that. No, it's because models don't eat. We all know that. But they were feeding us, but they were like feeding us sandwiches. And I was like, can I have a there sandwich? There wasn't enough variety. Yeah, I, I was like, can I have a salad? There was yeah. just a lot of bread. And I was like, yeah, because oh. that's going to make you feel bloated. Bloated, chunky. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go home 20 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I want to move to Europe so badly because I felt so light when I was there. Like the really? food. I didn't feel stuff like I had pasta, a yeah. bowl of pasta that if I'm here in the States, I'm like, 
oh my God, I'm stuffed. But there I was like, that was good. Went walk to my hostel. I didn't feel like I ate anything. I experienced the exact same thing when I went to Italy. It's like, like oh my God, I'm hungry. when I eat pasta here, like, yeah, bloated, you feel gross. Disgusting. Eating pasta in Italy felt great. It's because we put so many preservatives and bullshit in our food here that they don't do in Europe. It's crazy. They have like health codes there. Yeah. Which- yeah. No, they have, <clears throat> no, they, they, there are chemicals that we put in our food here in the United States that are banned in other, um, in other countries. Yeah. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I even had five guys in Paris and usually like fast food. I don't like it because it makes me feel like gross. I have hot girl bath, bad problems, like bathroom problems. Oh, Mm -hmm. we have talked about this. (laughs) I don't know if we should go into detail, but you've told me some pretty fucking funny stories. I poop in my car. Oh my God. Okay. We can talk about this. Can we please talk (laughs) about this? Okay. Okay. Yes. (laughs) I think everyone knows I have like hot girl bathroom problems. This is my favorite Jenna Fox story. So, (laughs) okay. So what what, you like refuse to poop in like public bathrooms, right? Refuse. Like on set or anyone's house. On set. When I first met Julia, I was going to her house like every day and I would at some point be like, I'm going home. Julia can take me home because I wasn't driving at the time. And this was when I first moved out here. And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah. We're just- talking about Julia Ann, by the way, for anyone who wants to know. Yeah, just take me home. And she's like, okay. And she's like, why did you leave so abruptly? I had to poop. <laughs> I would leave her house every time I had to poop. And she's like, just poop. I'm like, no. Yeah, Julia of all people would not care. I'm like, I'm going to blow up your bathroom. I'm okay. So how do you poop in your car? How does this work? Like, I know you've told me, but like, I feel like logistically this makes no sense to me, but you seem to have it down. I have a little poop toilet that I got from Amazon. Oh, I, so like, you actually upgraded to a toilet because I feel like yeah, the last time we talked, you it was just in a bag. used a bag. <laughs> Listen, when you got to go, you got to go. And, and re- you got clearly in your car. <laughs> Is I where to you keep, have to like, go. Little grocery bags in my car and baby wipes, sanitizer, and there's like a little wooden thing that you get like the markets and you light it and it's like a instant thing. Yeah, <sighs> I would just sit in the back of my car, pull out the bag, squat, put it under me, and poop. In the are you so wait where are you in the back seat? Sometimes I'm in the front seat, <laughs> and people don't see you. I guess not. I pull over somewhere that I'm like hidden a little bit but no it's like i'm it almost is like i'm just sitting because i'm like sitting on my knees i just feel like this would be so, <laughs> like have you ever like lost your balance and fallen and then like fallen into the bag of poop that's what i would be scared of and I then like you really have a mess to. on your hands i try not to because when i have to go and it's that severe it's bad so i'm like don't 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 touch the poop don't fall in the poop and then i tie it up and i find like a trash can <laughs> So, so the, now you're using a, to- a wooden toilet. A wooden toilet? <laughs> no, it's just a little one of those little plastic portable toilets. Okay. And I put it like under me, and I like sit there like I'm chilling. <laughs> so now you have like a proper. Is it? Have you ever had anyone in your car who's like, why is there a fucking portable toilet in your car? <laughs> no, I keep it in the trunk. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> but I change it out every time. I don't poop like in the toilet. I put a bag in right. the toilet and poop right. in it. Right, no, I understand that. But I like to change it because I feel like bacteria i don't know yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah i have i have a bad poop oh my god one time i was coming from sushi and i hadn't had it in so long i had spicy garlic and amame my favorite and i could not make it home i almost crapped myself in the car oh my god. so i had to pull over on the highway while there's cars zooming past me and i'm just pooping i'm just <laughs> looking at the car I just see like a cop pulling up behind you and then like coming and knocking on the door. I mean, like, ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? You're like, I'm no. just pooping in my car. It's fine. Sometimes I, I can't make it home and I just sit there and poop. I'm like, it's fine. I've even sent screenshots to Julia. I'm like, in my car. <laughs> I mean, there's people out there with poop fetishes. You can probably start a whole side, like, only fans I get so this. many DMs. To poop. Like, really? To because poop? they know about your no. car pooping situation or just because? Just because they want poop videos right. or like fart videos. I'm yeah. Like, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not sending you guys this. Like, yeah. they don't care about my face being in it. They just want to see me poop. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm missing out on a whole market here. You really are. Because another girl posted the other day. She's like, I make so much money just sending guys my poop. And I was like, maybe this is a sign that I should start. 
doing it because I'm just pooping for free at this point. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> why would you do that? Um, I mean, just think about how you, the portable toilet that you could upgrade to in your car. I mean, you could buy, you could get a whole car customized with a special toilet seat in the back for you to just poop in. Dude, great. I wish they did pimp my ride still because <gasps> I feel like <laughs> ever so many stories about just that show alone that we could take you there and they could like literally put a toilet the seat in- could like come up to like oh my god, a toilet in the back. And maybe like music plays and there's like an Ambiance. automatic like air freshener thing. That would be heaven. I've heard that the bathrooms in Japan are like that. That like the 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 toilets in Japan, like in public places, are like really incredible, and like they like play music and they like have a whole like. Thing. I'd be in there all day, just chilling. Yeah. In the toilet. I it, those of you who've been to Japan, let me know if I'm <laughs> correct, but I have heard this that like there's some pretty like their their public toilet situations pretty fabulous. You have to pay for toilets in Paris. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, same in Italy too. And I remember too, I would pay for a toilet and it would be a hole in the ground. <laughs> and I would be like, this is not. And also, like, they don't have toilet seats sometimes. Yes. What the fuck is that? In my hostel, I went to the bathroom and I was like, Am yeah. I missing something? So I went downstairs. I was like, hey, I think it's missing a toilet seat. He's like, no, that's just a toilet. I was like, where do I, how do I sit? Do I squat? Like, I'm Girl, you poop in. in you poop in your car. Okay, you of all people can navigate that lack of a toilet seat I know, situation. But it was like, <laughs> I would like a toilet seat if I could have one, but <laughs> but you don't need one. No. Yeah, you're you're. I feel like you could adapt to that. Okay. Well, Good times with Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> shit. We're going to um, take a quick commercial break and then uh, we're going to come back and talk about many things, but not poop. I think we're done <laughs> with the poop conversation um, about how you lost your virginity on camera. Yes. Very exciting. Very interesting story. So um, stick around, guys. We'll be right back. I will admit I'm one of those people who signs up for a subscription and then completely forgets about it. The other day, I finally went through all of my subscriptions and I found so many I wasn't using. And I probably would have done it sooner if there was something out there that could easily track my expenses. Oh wait, there is. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is here to help you stop wasting your money. It shows you all of your subscriptions in one place and then cancels whatever you don't still want. You may even find out that you've been double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Saving money has never been so easy. Get rid of your useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash holly. Seriously, this could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash holly. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions at rocketmoney.com slash holly. Hey guys, we are back. Um, So Jenna, Let's talk about how you got into the porn industry and how you lost your virginity on camera because that's that's pretty unusual. I was noticed by an owner from Reality Kings mm-hmm. back when I was a little starlet. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> were you 18? How old were you? 19? 19, okay. And he's like, "You ever want to do porn?" I was like, "Hell yeah. How do I do it?" And he's like, "Come tomorrow for a casting." I was like, "Okay." Next day I started shooting. I was like, can I shoot with girls So Because I'm a virgin. And he's like, huh? I was like, yeah. I've only, I've tried to have sex with an old boyfriend. Bless his heart. He probably is like a, a whore. <laughs> but his dick was too big. Mm-hmm. And I like, I tried to get on it. And I was like, oh, can we first, go watch a movie? Yeah, the first time is not, Ooh. it's never fun. And it was like, it was big too. So I was yeah, like. Yeah, that's rough. Oh, so I was a virgin ever since. And then I did my first scene for Rally Kings and it was, it wasn't memorable. I mean, it, it was memorable for you. I would Well, imagine. for me, because but you I was feel like, like it wasn't a memorable scene. No, I just treated it like I was just like, did you tell them you were a virgin? I did. They did not market that properly. They didn't market it as a virgin scene. Nope. Were they concerned about? Because honestly, if a girl was like, I want to do wiggle porn, porn, but I'm still a virgin, I'd be like, I ain't shooting. 
Christine, are you kidding me? Like, I would never do that. I told the guy, so like, cause you know how guys have that like stereotype. Yeah. She's going to fall in love with me. Yeah. I'm like, no, not, not you. So, so I mean, okay. Do, do you remember who it was with? No, he had a big dick. He's not in porn anymore. Okay. I think it was like a Miami situation. Okay. So how did that go? You got to like walk me through this. Cause this is, this is intense. It was very bland, I will say. Hmm. I don't remember the scene. I think I don't I don't remember the scene. We shot it at a, an apartment. Very amateur or whatever. We went for ice cream after. There's like really no there's no excitement about that scene. But I mean, did it hurt? Did you bleed? I didn't bleed, and I think that just comes from like my background in riding horses. Okay. I've heard, so I was like Okay, no nope, See, no but blood. I rode horses my whole life, too. And Did I, you? You yeah. blood? Uh-huh. I yeah, I was bleed. an equestrian. That's what they were worried about, was bleeding. It was like... I, and I, I bled. <laughs> it was like, nothing's back I there. I fucking hurt. <laughs> it hurt. I was definitely walking like... <laughs> yeah. But I didn't bleed, no. I don't... I can't remember the last time I bled. So, okay, so he penetrates you. So you don't think... So you think your hymen was already broken. So it was just uncomfortable because he was big and you were not used to that. Mm-hmm. How did you how did you manage that? Like, did you guys take a lot of breaks? Did you use a lot of lube? Did you ev- did it eventually become less painful? Was it ever enjoyable? No, it it wasn't good at all. Like we we did go for ice cream after, which is nice. <laughs> which is nice. So I was like, okay, paycheck and ice cream, cool. But no, it didn't. I don't even remember who shot it. Like that's how un memorable it was I don't remember the guy I don't know who shot it I know it was for reality kings I heard if I would have come here first to LA it would have been marketed so different probably but they just was like no shoot it (laughs) I was like okay so I mean I would it sounds to me like losing your virginity wasn't that big of a deal to you no I mean I've had sex with women before right right right. like before that but you tend to gravitate towards women right yeah Mm. Mm. there's so much to play with because <laughs> <laughs> i i mean i know that there's gonna be people watching this interview and they're gonna be like oh god what a traumatic experience for her and she's just like no. hiding the trauma and like etc cetera, etc cetera. but i know that a lot of people put like so much on i i find that there is i have a little bit of an issue with the importance that sometimes people put on virginity in terms of it being like a prize that like women have to hold on to and like yeah. sell it to the highest bidder, whether it be like maybe somebody who's willing to market it, it to appropriately <laughs> as a porn. Right. And, and do that. Or like someone who's willing to marry you or something yeah. like that to like have be the first one that you, they've ever been with. You know, they'd sell us this idea of like save your virginity for marriage right. and blah, 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 and that kind of stuff. Whereas with men, it's kind of like, you know, generally like, oh, don't stay a virgin too long because it's embarrassing. You yeah. know, like the 40 year old virgin. And, you know, you got to like lose your virginity earlier because otherwise you're not a man. But as a woman, once you lose your virginity, you're like, there's this idea that you're like damaged goods in some way. Yeah. I would probably still be a virgin if. I had come here first hmm. to men. Mm-hmm. Cause you, you, you prefer to be with women, right? Yeah. yeah. They're more fun. I mean, at least I haven't been with a guy where I'm like, mm. it's mostly women have been like that for me. Mm-hmm. Like I'll fuck a guy. He, but mm, there's no spark. Would you consider yourself a lesbian? Or would you consider yourself bisexual? Or would you consider yourself pansexual? Or do you just not like labels? Mm-hmm. I would say bisexual because I still enjoy fucking men, Mm -hmm. but I date women. Gotcha. There hasn't been a guy yet that's like, yeah. Ting. No, it hasn't been like. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) I know that was that was very that was great timing. (laughs) (laughs) It hasn't been like that yet, so I'm just like, okay, well, women it is until sparks fly with a guy. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you find dating difficult? No, it's not difficult, but I've had a few like hiccups dating mm. at least women. Okay. In the industry and out the industry. Do you find that, do you think that it has something to do with your job or just like, I mean, you're young and like not, 
necessarily being ready for a committed relationship or some people are not into committed relationships, period. You know, Holly, I'm lonely. (laughs) The holidays are coming up. I have to be with my family. I love them. But like, I want to go on a trip, like a little ski trip in a little cabin and have like cocoa with a cute person. No, I have to do that by myself. It's fine. Yeah, but I mean, you're how old are you? Twenty five. Yeah, you're young. Yeah, I think twenty five. You're young. It's okay to be lonely at twenty five. <laughs> I don't want to be though. I know. It's I know. it's so boring. Like, cause I'm like a hopeless romantic, mm-hmm. even though people think I'm not. But I'm like, I'll get you flowers. I'll run you a bath. No, I have to do that shit for myself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You got to learn to love yourself before you can love somebody else. I'm tired of me. (laughs) Tired of loving me. So what's what's your type then? What kind of girls do you tend to go for? Mills. Oh, of course. (laughs) I forgot. I knew that. But yes, I forgot. You are a milf hunter in every sense of the word. That was actually one of the things that was communicated to me when I first started working with you, that you really liked MILFs. I remember that. That's how I got in. Well, that's how I originally, like, started to get in. Once, Mm -hmm. like, after I started shooting the boy girl, I was like, if anyone knows Julia Ann, tell her I'm coming for her. And you guys are very good friends. (laughs) Yeah. I think I manifested that a little bit. So how did that work out? (laughs) Were you, like, a little starstruck when you first met her? Yes. She requested me for a scene for Girlfriends Films after I guess she had heard that I was like, no, I'm kidding. I went to my first AVN and I was like, hey, I want to shoot for your your company because she was doing just girl, girl at mm-hmm. the time for her website. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to shoot. And she was like, well, how old are you? I'm like, not, not what you want. And she was like, okay, when you're 21, hit me back up. And I was like, fuck, why? I'm mature up here. So I was like, okay, are you going to AVN? She's like, yeah. She's like, come see me at my booth. I was like, okay. So I went to see her at her booth and it was like a ton of milfs at the booth. I was like, heaven. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm in heaven. And then I met her and I was like, hi. And she's like, hey. And then she's like, why do you like women? I said the most ridiculous thing that just came out of my my brain. I was like, I like my women with a little mouse on their tires. And I was like, why did I say that? <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> and she called Vicky Vett over because she was at their booth. And she's like, yeah, she's a little hot one. And I was like, what are you doing later? And I was like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> it's like, we take a bath later. And? We didn't. We didn't take a bath later, but I was offering it to like everybody at the booth. Like, we can just have a cuddle puddle. That's, That's really fine. cute. That's really, it wasn't like, hey, I want to like, do you or want to like like, bury my face between your legs it was like do you want to take a bath so innocent sounding which is also kind of creepy like i don't know i feel like there's nothing coming from you that could come off creepy you're too endearing if i came up to you and was like do you want to take a bath i would be like you're so cute no but you're adorable (laughs) no (laughs) okay just because i don't like women but you know if i did i'm sure i would (laughs) okay i'll take that (laughs) And then we shot for girlfriend's films and I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I was like, no, I went and got my makeup done for her and everything because girlfriend's film does not have a makeup team. Yeah. They just want you to be like, Natural. hop out of the bed. Yeah. That's who you are. And I'm mm-hmm. like, do you know who I'm having sex with? Julia Ann, stop. I'm going to go get my makeup done. And it was a very starfish scene. Like I was like, I was like, okay. So you were nervous. I was so nervous. And then I gave her money for an animal. <laughs> oh, okay. So, okay. So Julia is very, in- <laughs> that came off sounding very strange. Julia is very involved in like animal charity organizations. Mm-hmm. So Rescuing. that's what you mean, right? Yeah. She posted something about a dog who needed help. And then she was like, yeah, request. Not it wasn't like you money. gave her money and then she went and bought an iguana with it. No. <laughs> that's, that's not what you meant. No. And it was like, bye. And then we started hanging out after that. And I was like, okay, it's no longer a fantasy. I know you too well now. Yeah, I know. They say don't meet your heroes. No. I've No, I've watched her do things. So I'm like, hmm. Yeah. yeah mm. We're all human beings when it comes down to it. It's like you're so hot, but no. <laughs> Speaking of Julia Ann, I did text her yesterday because I wanted to make sure 
um, that I could get some things to ask you about because when I asked you for a bio, you sent me nada. <laughs> because bio seems like so – I don't know. What do people write when they write a bio? About and themselves? it's actually hard. I, I'm, I'm not good at writing my own bio either. You got to make somebody else do it I'm for like, you. You got to get like a PR agent horses. to do it. I lived in Miami. I'm from Canada. I'm, like that's a, that's what I do. I'm like, hmm. Okay. So <laughs> this is um, this is what Julia Ann told me. Uh, she's become a big traveler. Traveled a lot of traveling. We just talked about that. You doing Fashion Week and all those uh, European cities. Your dog has the best underbite in the world. Oh, my God. He's so cute. You have to see him. He's cute as a little nugget. She's a total MILF hunter and has big goals. Constantly making content. Um, oh, he is so cute. He he's, is so cute. Oh, I think I've seen pictures of him before. Yes, my little gremlin. Um, and then uh, you're terrified of geckos. What is it specifically about geckos that you find so terrifying? I don't like the way they crawl. And okay. they're like, they're so vast too. I yeah. also was attacked by one what in Miami. What? Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's hear this. Let's hear this story. I was walking to my friend's house and like, and Miami has like all these trees and stuff. Like, especially if you live in an apartment and like over mm -hmm. bushes and stuff. And the geckos like to live in the bushes. And one, I was going knock on her door and one hopped, I guess, off the bush and I guess we're trying to go to the other side and it hopped on me and I was fighting demons trying to get it off me. So was it just like scurrying all around you? And it, they have like little yes. webby sticky feet, right? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, we went to Hawaii, me and Julia and her guy and someone else and there were geckos all over the, the house. I slept in the car for the first two nights. You slept and pooped in the car? Yes, because I refused to sleep in the house because the geckos were like, everywhere i'm like i'm not sleeping in here <laughs> i'm that terrified i don't like bugs either yeah yeah she said um that you she, you think you could make it on naked and afraid oh. yet a bug is death for her you know that like naked and afraid would there be a lot of bugs right i mean i, I guess you'd know. be afraid and we know that getting naked is not <laughs> a problem for you so like, i guess we've covered both <laughs> yeah i really i there was a time where i like applied for naked and afraid and julia got me a tent and stuff and a fire starter. She's like, go in the backyard and figure it out because we're going to have this bet. If you do it, I'm going to give you something. If not, you have to give me something. It's like, okay. It never happened, but I'm still trying to go on naked and afraid. Did you, did they just, not, they didn't accept you? No, I think it, COVID happened. Uh, and then I was like, survivor. I can go on survivor. Dude, they should do a naked and afraid porn star edition. I've That'd been be saying so this smart. for so long. Because, like, everybody wants to see porn stars naked, obviously. Just put a bunch of them on an island, see what they could do. Oh, my God. Genius. It's going to be hilarious. That I would told be Julie about funny. that. And I was like, I don't have the money to put the production together, but you someone kick, should. Dude, Kickstarter. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like somebody. I mean, look, you're not shooting porn, right? You don't have to shoot no. porn. There has to be nothing pornographic about it. They're naked. Which, whatever. So and then they're afraid because you drop them in the middle of an island. I feel like <laughs> if you did a Kickstarter campaign, you could get somewhere with that. Hmm. I'm going to try that. Okay. All right. You're, I know you have big goals. So 2023, you're going to manifest naked oh. and afraid. And survivor. And survivor. And survivor. <laughs> um, so you're no longer shooting with any studios. Is that correct? Or are you I'm being, you picking what? Okay, so you pick and choose. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but you're shooting a lot for your own stuff. Yeah. How has, like, the change – how has, like, the way that COVID changed the industry and, like, the rise of OnlyFans, how has that changed your work? It's definitely changed me from shooting – having to go and shoot for studios, especially people I don't want to shoot for, mm -hmm. and picking – Shooting with people, like, I don't, like, the talent-wise, who mm -hmm. I don't want to shoot with. I'm like, mm, or they're, there's someone I do want to shoot with, and they put us together, but then they cancel. Mm -hmm. And then they put me with someone else. I'm like, oh, I can sign up for this person, but okay. Yeah. So now, with OnlyFans, I can just shoot with who I want. And like, hey, do you want to hook up? Yes. Okay. My place. So who are some of your people, favorite people to work with besides Julianne, obviously? Hmm. April. April Olsen. <laughs> um, 
I shoot with Ray Black a lot. He's like my porn husband. Okay. So I, you're, so you're doing, I mean, so having the choice, mm-hmm. you will still shoot with guys. Yeah. I still hit up guys. I hit up Mr. Lucky POV. Mm-hmm. Mostly Ray. Ray's like the only guy I hit up. Mm-hmm. I've been offered by Dread a couple times and I'm like, no. Just too big? Oh my God. He's the size of my leg. Yeah. He's a lovely man though. He's so sweet. He's so sweet. He was on my no list for a while and I was like, Dread, you're only on my no list because you're so big. And I yeah. know one day they would probably put us together. But it's not happening. So I'm just going to stop it right in its tracks. Yeah. Nice guy though. But I know. He's so sweet. Yeah. Um. So what about women? I hit up all the girls. Mm, my favorite, though, there's so many. I know. I actually hate this question when people there's, ask there's, me. Oh. That's like, I have so many, too. <laughs> I can't even, well, I can't even think of one. Cherie. Okay. I, I have a bunch of content with Cherie. Yeah, Cherie's awesome. Everybody loves Cherie. I love Cherie. Yeah, she's great. Um, so what is one of the biggest misconceptions that people have about adult stars that we're not funny i know there's other things but (laughs) that's the one that that's the one that's upsetting to you is that people may not think you're not funny and trust me people she's funny or have a personality you do have a personality sometimes though you're like an i see this is the thing i can't tell you about you sometimes the things that you say i can't tell if you're being intentionally funny or not Cause you'll say something and it's like ridiculous. And I'm like, she had to, she had to know what she was saying. And then you act like you didn't know what you were saying, but I think that you do. And no. I think that you just play it off. Cause it's funnier if you play it <laughs> off, but I think that, you know, no, my best friend says this a lot. He's like, you're fucking hilarious. Just what, what you say. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just telling you what came out of my brain at yeah, the time. That's true. You don't really have a filter. <laughs> no. <laughs> Julia says the same thing. She had face surgery recently, not recently, but she was like, What do you think? And I was like touching her neck and I was like, You look the same. You look beautiful. And she's like, Get out. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Send out what you wanted to hear. She's like, I just had a whole face lift and you're just. Oh, it looks the same. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. You don't ever want to say that. <laughs> Just always say you look amazing. There you go. I mean, I ended with that. Right. <laughs> but, you know. Just- I just say stuff that just like flows out. I don't I don't think before I yeah. speak. So people think funny. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, so that's like kind of one of the endearing things about you, though, too, is that like you do just say stuff and you don't you don't think it sometimes. We're too, I know that I overthink the things that I say for sure. I overthink the things that I do. Okay. Yeah, I do that. Okay. But Julia, like, I, have you heard about don't throw the baby out with the bathwater thing? Yes. Yeah. She said this to you when I think two years into our friendship and I was like, why would you throw the baby out of the bath? Just fill the tub. Why would you do that? And she was like, what's wrong with you? I was like. <laughs> it is a strange expression though, to be fair. Like egg on your face too. She said that one. I'm like, who put egg on your face? Why is it like what? Yeah, I mean, there's got to be. It's sometimes it's interesting to research like the re like where these phrases come from, because a lot of them like don't really make sense. And she told me, but was like, oh, that wasn't my thought, <laughs> or the egg whites thing. There was like a carton, and I was like, she's like, you can make egg whites, and I was like, how? They're like egg whites come in a carton. I was like, it's not. What do you do? She's like, just split the egg. But I was like, how did they get there? She's like, honey. (laughs) Did you mean that like you you can take a brown egg and turn it white? Like dye it white? Is that what you were thinking? No, she was like like egg whites. I think I was trying to make eggs for breakfast. And she was like, oh, there's – I was like, are something. And then there was egg whites in a carton. And I'm like, why are they in a carton? Oh, I see. And she's like, who raised you? (laughs) It's like, where did you grow up? Canada. Who did raise you? <laughs> my mommy. I grew up in Canada, but in Miami too. Okay. She used to say I was sheltered. And I was like, honey, if you knew what I did when I lived in Miami, he would not say I was sheltered. But I, I don't know if she meant in like the school way or whatnot. But were, were you, you weren't like home, homeschooled or anything, were you? No. no. I went to school in Miami, which mm-hmm. is a thing in itself. Like really? growing up there as a kid. I was into a did lot get, of shit. Did you get into a lot of trouble? No, I was, I'm clever with mm. like trouble and like 
things, I'm mm-hmm. a clever one. Like mm-hmm. I never. You got away with everything basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Same, actually same. There was a lot of, it's funny because sometimes my mom will be, because I was like not a great kid and I'm sober now and I'm pretty responsible. <laughs> but sometimes when my mom is a friend who's like struggling with their teenager, she's like, oh, you know, if they're like into drugs or alcohol, she's like, oh, maybe you could talk to the mother and like make her feel better. I'm like, how? <laughs> I was a fucking nightmare as a teenager. I was drinking. I was doing drugs. I was fucking, dr- when I was 15, I got a sheet of acid and I dropped acid every single weekend that summer when I was 15 years old. Like I was not a good child and then I got worse in my 20s and then I developed like a really terrible drinking problem that like pretty much went through my entire 20s. So wow. like I'm not going to make a mother feel better. No. I'd be like, oh, eventually when they hit their 30s, they'll get their shit together. But in between like now and then, which is like a good 15 years or something like that, like your kid might, you know, drive off a cliff drunk. But yeah. If they don't, maybe they'll get sober one day like I did. <laughs> like that's not helpful you were doing at acid. all. I was doing Molly. <laughs> I mean, I did that too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I was but like, I, I, I mean, for me, it was like whatever was easily available, yeah. right? It was like whatever you could get. I couldn't really get Molly. That wasn't easy to find. That was a wild child. But there was some guy that had some hookup with acid. So that's what we did. Yeah. Hanging out with people half my age, going to clubs, raving. I'm like, where are you going? I did my homework already. No, I didn't. I'm going to a club. <laughs> yeah. Kind of scary. Do you want kids one day? No. Yeah. Mm-mm. I don't blame you. I don't like children. Well, that's okay. Like, I like other people's children. Yeah. I don't like children on my own. Yeah. I mean, it's... I like animals. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 a big responsibility. I think it's important to know what you want. I feel like some people have children just because they feel like they should. You know, especially women. I feel pressured yeah. into doing it. But it's a fucking commitment. I also can't do the birth thing. Like, mm. I don't want anything coming out of me that big. Yeah. I don't want to split open. Yeah, you, you generally tear when you oh, give birth. I, it's okay. I've seen it. birth videos. I'm like, yeah, no, those are terrible. <sighs> I so before when I was pregnant, before I had Violet, mm. um, we we took a birthing class at home, of course, because it was during COVID. And some of the videos that the woman showed me, I'm like, this is not making me feel. This is not helping. Oh. There was this one where there was this woman who was giving birth, and the baby was like crowning, right? So it was like just at the like the vagina and about to get out and she was screaming get it out of me get it out of me get it out of me and I was like oh my god like I get nightmares I'd be the man in that situation like I'm going outside (laughs) going in the waiting room I can't stay here yeah so I was like uh yeah don't watch birth videos if you're gonna have a baby that does not no I also feel like I'm not fulfilled yet in my life to you're way well, I will say have way, children. I will say you're way too young to have children. I mean, I waited until I was 41 to have my first child, which crazy. was, which is arguably, you know, not okay. It was fine for me. I was very lucky. I had an easy pregnancy, I had an easy birth. My daughter's super healthy. You were climbing mountains, but, pregnant, <laughs> yeah, shooting yeah. on your knees, everything. Like, I was, yeah. Yeah, I shot you when I was like eight months pregnant. Yes, and not yes. even taking a break. I was yes, like, and it was like 115 now. It's like, do you need water? <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? <laughs> that next, so I should have drank more water because I don't know if I ever told you, but um, that like night at about five o'clock in the morning, I woke up with the most severe leg cramps that I've ever had in my life. Like I was in tears. Oh, jeez. And, and my legs seized up and I couldn't even walk. Like they completely, because I hadn't drank enough water when we did our shoot. Oof. And it was hot out. And, you know, like, and my husband like had to try to massage my legs to just get them. I couldn't even move them. He had to like put me in a bath at, at five o'clock in the morning because Oof. I couldn't, it was awful. Mm-mm. It's all your fault. Don't. <laughs> All your fault. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't drink enough water, so. Yeah, I'm never having kids. Okay. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think I just talked you out of it, if you were even thinking about it. I think I look cute pregnant, though. You would look cute pregnant. Little baby bump. Yeah. But no. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to know what you want. And you can always change your mind later if you want to. I've always thought I would adopt, if anything. Yeah. Like, give a kid a nice home. That's not a bad idea. There's a lot of kids out there that need homes. I have a friend who's going through the adoption process, and you can actually adopt a child um, mm. when the mother's still pregnant. Because <gasps> there's a cool. like, there's a lot of, like, you know, teenage girls that are pregnant and stuff like that, and they don't – and so you can actually choose to adopt the child in the pregnancy, and then you're present and you're there 
throughout the pregnancy and then you're there at the birth and stuff like that which is not insanely expensive because you have to pay for all of the medical costs i should be a surrogate but (laughs) you just said that you don't want a baby to come out of your vagina you don't want to be a surrogate trust me you can't even take a big dick you're right you can't if you can't take dread you can't be a surrogate mother (laughs) you're right Okay, that ended everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've decided you're gonna you're gonna live a fashionable, child free life. You're gonna be the rich aunt. You're gonna travel the world. You're gonna walk <laughs> all the fashion catwalks, and um, you're gonna give your love to animals in need. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> and you're gonna find somebody who loves you, and you're gonna grow old with them, and you're gonna be happy. Old. I mean, if you're lucky, you're gonna grow old. Yeah, but not old. I don't want to look old. Well, you don't have to look old, but you got to grow old. Otherwise, you die. <clears throat> Growing old is a privilege. Is it? Yeah, because otherwise you die. If you don't grow old, then you do- your alternative is dying young. Oh, you're right. Mm-mm. So, I mean, some people prefer that, but mm-hmm. if you can. And also, too, like, with medical advances, by the time you grow old, you can probably, like, live forever or something. You'll be fine. It'll be much easier to grow old. I'm going to be a robot. <laughs> Yeah, later on than it is now. I mean, science is fucking crazy. Anyways, <laughs> Jenna. It's so off topic. I know we really did, but that's okay. I love it. It was like free flowing conversation. Like conversations. Thank you so much for coming. On. Thanks for it's having a pleasure. me. Pleasure. Can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Um, my Instagram is Braddy Fox with two X's underscore. My Twitter, if you can find it, is only Jenna Fox, two X's, and there's an ink at the end. And my OnlyFans. You can see your OnlyFans, yeah. My TikTok is Good Times and Smiles. It should be the only one. And then my OnlyFans is OnlyFans slash the Jenna Fox with two X's. Fabulous. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, I'm still on TikTok holding on by a thread. I didn't even know you were on TikTok. I know. I I don't promote it, I guess, as much as I should. I don't know. I feel I, – it's mostly, it's mostly clips from my podcast because I feel stupid on TikTok. But that's what you post at. Plug Talk does that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what you'll mostly find. You rarely find stuff of, like, me just by myself because I'm just not, like – I'm not videos. entertaining enough. She do baby videos. No, I don't put – I can't put Violet on, like, public platforms. TikTok? Mm-mm. No, right. I have a private Instagram. If you want to see more pictures of my child, I can send you that. Okay. But I don't. Otherwise, I keep her off the public because you know we, you're such a good mom. People, f- weird followers. I don't want to. I don't <sighs> want like to expose my daughter to people who are. And look, like people who are following me generally, they're fans of porn. Like they don't want to see my kid. Like that's not what they're there for. That's true. You know I've I mean? seen like TikTok videos. I know we're like running over, but there's like baby videos of like moms who like. Dressed are like they're baby famous. Yeah. But there's the shares are like 300K shares mm-hmm. of the baby video. I'm like, yeah. who's, why are you sharing this? Who saved this? It's like saved. And I'm like, why did you save these baby videos? Yeah. I'm just not ready to put my daughter out in the public like that. I would like her to be of an age to consent to that. That's kind of how I feel about it. But oh, I, I to every mom. everybody their own. Like, I don't judge people do what they want with their kid. I just, trying to give Violet a normal life as much as I possibly can. Anyways, <laughs> if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered, where I offer these interviews live streamed and I do bonus Q&As, which Jen and I are going to jump into real quick. So um, make sure that you go and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week.